Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining our first 2017 ULI Thought Leadership Webinar, where we invite some of, some of our corporate members to share their new concepts, ideas, and best practices with our members. Before we kick off some general housekeeping, this is a 15-minute webinar, and there is no question and answer portion at the end. However, you're welcome to email us or type all your questions into the box that's been provided through this platform. We will collate and share them with the presenter and they will connect with you individually following the presentation. Please also be reminded to stay muted as to not interrupt the speaker and this presentation will be recorded. And now I'm pleased to introduce to you Mindy Teo, VP of Innovations from Ascot Limited to share about their newly launched brand Life, designed for and managed by millennials who wish to experience destinations as locals do. Going beyond traditional hospitality concepts, Life signifies a new way of living and collaborating as a community, connecting guests with fellow travelers and change makers. Over to you, Mindy. Thanks, Stephanie. Um, so before I talk about life at SMU, which is really the purpose of today's presentation, um, I thought I'll first uh, you know, talk about our latest brand, Life, to give a little bit of background and perspective to life at SMU and why it's such an interesting project. So for Life, um, it's a new brand, it's a new service residence brand that Ascot launched in November last year. It took us about a year to conceptualize the brand, um, and really our intent was to capture the millennial and millennial-minded market. Um, why millennials? Because they're 25% of our current business, um, but they're going to account for more than half of the global workforce in 2020. So this is potential that we wanted to capture, and we also see Life as a means for us to capture new industry segments. Um, traditionally, we cater a lot to corporate clientele, um, sectors like education, government, consultancies, and finance. But with life, because it's a little bit more edgy, a little bit more quirky, we're hoping to appeal to entrepreneurs, startups, and creative industries like media and entertainment. So it's, it's really about being able to capture a new share, new market share for us. Um, and when we looked at life, um, we wanted to put forward a product that's really service apartments for millennials. And that's how we came up with co-living or community living. Um, it's really the concept of a self-contained property instead of a self-contained apartment. So typically for traditional service apartments, we have, um, you know, within a single apartment, we have a kitchenette, we have a separate bedroom. Um, it's basically like an apartment instead of a hotel room. Um, but with life, we see um, communal and collaboration spaces is more important. So for instance, instead of having a kitchenette in your room, we have a big communal kitchen that everyone can share in the, in the property. So it's really about building community around the property. It's a new way of staying um, connected, living as a community. It's about building connections and shared spaces with fellow residents in the life property. So if you look at our values, they're also about curiosity, um, togetherness, because we want to foster community and collaboration, authenticity, because you want to go lo local, support local businesses, be really plugged into the local culture and community. And it's also about creation and freedom to pursue their passions. So, you know, life itself stands for live your freedom. It's really about empowering our residents to and our guests, you know, to pursue their passions. And if you look at this is just an example slide to show how different it is from our, you know, existing three brands. Um, so if you look at this, even from the CI, it's pretty obvious that our three brands, um, Ascot City and Somerset, they're more traditional. Um, Ascot caters to the C suite. And you know, Somerset is about executives who relocate with their families. Um, it's really not so much as none of these really appeals to millennials as, as a specific uh, customer set. So when we talk about appealing to millennials, we have to change the way we're doing things. It's a little bit different from the existing brands. Um, so for instance, social media is, is a key part of our outreach to millennials. Um, we had our CEO take part in a mannequin challenge um, when we launched the brand in November. And it generated 400,000 unique views in two weeks. Um, so it's a lot of buzz. Um, it's probably more buzz than we get for our social media websites for the other brands in the whole year. Um, and a lot more active in Instagram, um, Instagram engagement. It's also about um, engaging social media bloggers as well to cover our, our launch. Um, so I think it's a really different way of outreach. Um, and so for the launch, for instance, we invited several universities to take part in the brand launch because we wanted to see how we could partner with them to co-innovate or leverage on their students to better understand their millennial needs and wants. Um, so one of these was Singapore Management University. 
And, you know, we started out the conversation to see if we could use one of the spaces for our brand launch. Um, it didn't really go through, but because of the discussion, we started to explore how we could collaborate on a more long-term project. So that's really how Life at SMU was, was born. Um, it's, uh, SMU um, has this unit called SMUX. It's, um, it's about promoting experimental and experiential learning pedagogy that challenges students to cha uh, tackle real-world problems faced um, by actual companies. So we saw a synergy with SMUX, and we were both keen on co-innovation and collaboration. And for us, we saw value that SMU has a lot of millennials. I mean, the, the whole student population is millennial. Um, it's a great community we should engage. And SMUX happens to run SMU Labs. It's located in a heritage building that used to house the Malayan Publishing House in Singapore. It's a 24-7 facility open to SMU students. It's a great location in the city center. It has street-facing facades. Um, so we saw an opportunity to transform SMU Labs, bring in elements of life, um, and together with SMUX, we're running it as a living lab to field test our life concept and millennials. Um, this will help us to tweak you know, our design and also our operational concepts. So it's really along with our tagline of by millennials, for millennials. Uh, we really want to tap on the students to see how they use the spatial space, um, how they, um, what type of inputs they have for our product. And it's also about growing brand awareness. Um, it's having that physical showcase um, because we don't expect the first property in Singapore to open so soon. So that, that physical showcase that we have at Life at SMU enables us to engage them um, both as future customers and future hires. And it's also some place that we can use, you know, to, to generate um, online presence as well, because through the activities that we hold in this space, um, we can generate, you know, Instagram feeds as well as um, Facebook feeds, for instance. So <clears throat> the objective is a three-year partnership with SMU, um, and through that three years, we want to have a better understanding of millennial needs and translate that into our actual life properties. So this is an example of how we can leverage on SMU technology. Um, they have a living lab technology that tracks the students um, by their mobile devices and how they move around the space. Um, so these heat maps are useful to us to see you know, which parts of the, the communal spaces that we put out are popular with them. Uh, for instance, we noticed the foosball table that can accommodate 20 over people. It's a, it's a customized foosball table because you want it to promote interaction. So it's longer than usual. 20 over people can play at one time, and it's pretty popular even from launch day. And we have, you know, this cubic ping pong table that's a little bit unconventional, and we realize that students really like to socialize um, in, the, in this area. So just to take a look at some of the pictures of the space before and after. So the pictures on the left are before, and on the right is after. So you can see that it looks pretty staid, a little bit more sterile in terms of typical, you know, university type of furniture. But we brought in design elements. Um, so we leave it in the heritage of, you know, the place as a publishing house in the past. And we brought in like a bookshelf, like a huge bookshelf, which is actually a light showcase. Um, and it even has, you know, this yellow DJ counter that students can use at night to maybe, you know, spin a little bit of, uh, spin some tunes. Um, so for instance, for a launch event, you know, we had the student group Stereo Meta, which is a DJ club in SMU to spin music during the event. Um, and we've brought in a lot more flexible furniture, like hexagonal tables that can be reconfigured easily by the students for discussions or self-study. Um, we've also brought in um, elements of pop-up retail. So if you see in the top right-hand corner, we have movable pop-up pop retail counters that we can use to do either launch events for millennial products with third parties. Um, SMU store um, also set up some of the products in the launch day to showcase. Um, and, you know, we brought in, it's not just about study. I mean, to be productive, you also need a bit of recreation. So we brought in the park uh, where we have, like, the cubic ping pong table, stationary bikes, um, so they can stay fit and study at the same time. And we've really made the workspace a lot more comfortable for the students. So we have uh, put in, you know, bean bags, couches that can be easily moved around for discussions, um, and dual-use furniture. So. When you go to SMU at 8 a.m., you see a lot of students sleeping on the beanbags. But when you go at 1 p.m., they're all working off the beanbags. They're using it as a chair or, you know, to work off the laptop. So really about dual-use, multi-use function so that the space is flexible, um, can be used for events, can be used for study. Um, it, it's 
that's the purpose that we want to do with life in a communal space is to, to you know, space is expensive from a real estate point of view, and we want to make it as efficient and flexible in terms of use. So we've done up the social pantry too, made it a lot more fun. Even the tables have games in them. Like you can play, you know, a bottle game on the tabletop, for instance. And if we look at it post renovation, it the students took a while to adjust to the new way of, you know, the new way the space is configured. Um, but within its two weeks, you know, it's it's really built up. We launched it in 23rd February. These are photos I think taken one or two weeks after we opened, and the students are really getting the hang of the space. Um, they're making themselves very comfortable in the space. So, but of course, you know, it's, when we talk about life, it's not just about what we do with the physical space. Um, a big selling point for life is how we build community. Um, and we thought that having this, this life at SMU allows us to test our place-making capabilities. Uh, we wanted to see how we could partner with um, other industry players or other, you know, F&B vendors in the vicinity to create a very buzzing hub and a destination that people actually want to come to. So, you know, apart from engaging students, um, uh, we, we do quarterly events for them. Um, for instance, we time them with their, with their academic calendar. So, for instance, they're going to have their exam soon, so we're going to give a free coffee giveaway to, you know, give them a little boost of energy. Um, we're also engaging them for their feedback and surveys. So, on one of the levels in this um, three-story um, space, uh, we actually have feedback walls where students can weigh in on, you know, either uh, topics of, of the of the month or um, in, for currently we have them vote on what they want to do for phase two of the renovation. Um, we gave them three room designs to choose from and they can actually select which ones they want and we will actually design the room according to their choice. So it's really giving them a say in, in, in life and also um, engaging them. <clears throat> and beyond the students, we're also partnering uh, local community. So we partnered local artists. Um, in this case, it's an artist called Mindflyer. Um, so he's actually customized the artwork and the murals for us. Uh, we've also worked with local artisans like Ula Lab to customize a scent for life. Actually, they customize three scents for life. Um, and we've also brought in other industry partners to work with SMU um, X. So for instance, we brought in um, Harman. So they brought in their JBL headphones, and they're testing two different models in our stress remedy room to see which one's more popular with millennials. Um, and, you know, we brought in Eon Reality, which is actually a U.S.-based firm that does virtual reality, to also um, do some survey and feedback from the students on how they can apply um, their technology in industry as well. So it, it was really challenging, you know, to persuade the management to approve this project because it's not something that has clear financial returns. Um, we're a real estate company, so everything is about, you know, IRR, it's about ROI, what's the return on investment? Um, but because it's a partnership with an educational institution, it's not a profit-making project. Um, we're not selling room nights at this property because, you know, it's, it's not an accommodation product uh, like a typical life property. Um, but we do see a lot of value in this project. It's helping us to fine-tune our life product and operational processes. For instance, you know, we notice how the millennials use the space, uh, what's good with them, what do we have to look out for in terms of, for instance, wear and tear and how they use the space. Um, it's also allowing us to engage future customers, um, and also it's a very strong marketing and community building tool. If we had no physical product like Life at SMU, it's very hard for us to keep, you know, putting social media feeds um, because it's not engaging. There's no, there's no substance or sustainable content to do so. Um, but with this space, for instance, we actually did an IG competition for the kids to take photos of, of the space uh, when we just opened the space. And, you know, as we have events, we're going to partner people like General Assembly to hold talks in this space. It's really allowing us to build the customer base and the awareness of the product as well. Uh, we've had uh, banks approaching us to see if they could use the venue to engage the millennial customers. Um, and what's, what's really fun is that, you know, when we had, um, when we were preparing for launch, one of the students popped in and looked at it, and he was a Red Bull ambassador. And he was, he liked the space so much, he said, we're going to sponsor your launch event tomorrow. We're going to bring Red Bull in. So it, it's really creating a destination that helps us to pull in these partners that we want to use as well and to, to work with um, to build community. It's also the Instagrammable spaces that we have. It helps to build awareness in social media. Um, it's, it's, it's really allowing us to even consider whether placemaking is a new revenue model we should consider because all these companies are coming to us to say they want to use the space for events. Um, so we're even discussing with SMU X if 
this is something we should test out, you know, beyond just an accommodation product, can we monetize the ability to create a destination? So, of course, you know, moving forward beyond the three-year partnership with Life at SMU, we have very aggressive growth targets for life. Uh, we plan to have 10,000 units under the brand by 2020 in key gateway cities. Um, so look out for the news because I think in the next few months you hear about a few properties soon. Uh, we're also continuing to fine-tune the design um, and the offerings. We're monitoring the heat maps from SMU to see, you know, what we can do to improve the space. Um, and we're also looking to extend the live community beyond Singapore. Because right now, because of the location of life at SMU in Singapore, it's still a bit more Singapore-centric. And we're also looking to continue to build, you know, the tie-ups and partnerships um, uh, around the life community. Um, so with that, you know, that wraps up my presentation on life at SMU. And, you know, feel free to email me if you have any questions on life or life at SMU. Or if you're keen to partner us, let us know as well. Yeah, thank you. That's great. Thank you, Mindy. And Thank you everyone for joining us. As mentioned, this presentation was recorded and will be sent to all ULI members. If you're not currently a member of ULI and would like to learn more, please visit our website, asia.uli.org. We hope you enjoyed the presentation. And again, if you have any questions for us or for Mindy and this project, Life Project, please feel free to contact us. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you.